In this video, we're going to take a look at SLR Magic's Micro Prime 50 millimeter f or T 1.2 prime lens. Now, I was really curious about this series of lenses because um, as you can see, they look like purpose-built SIN lenses. Uh, the body's made out of metal. Um, they have the focus gears and the iris gears built in. And of course, this is in the native Sony E-mount. So, um, what are these like? Let's go take a look. So let's look at bokeh first. And as we uh, go to close focus, uh, we can see that the, the lights in the background, they don't go perfectly around into, in the center and definitely on the edges. Uh, their ovalized is a little stronger, um, you know, a little bit of a coma effect. And also I noticed that the, the lights themselves, they, they tend to have some fall off um, on one side, depending on which side of off of center they are. And if we stop down to a uh, T4, some slight stop signing uh, in the distance we can see. Uh, but on the edges, of course, the shapes have evened out quite a bit at a T4. And at a T8, again, you know, the the round uh, roundness in the background isn't perfectly round, but of course, at this point, it's actually not that bad. So this is the uh, lens at a T8. And moving on to a uh, flare test, a ghosting flare test, um, we do see wide open that we do have kind of these unusual, uh, very large uh, concentric flares, rainbow and kind of an odd shape. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting, though it could be distracting on some shoots. And at a T4, we are getting some more conventional um, ghosting flares on the bottom left, although, you know, that shaft of light, that um, it reminds me more of a veiling flare, but that's, uh, you know, another type of flare. Um, at a T4, T8, again, we get that strong shaft of light effect. Which again is kind of cool, but it could be distracting, um, depending on on what the shot is. So that's a that's a look at some ghosting flares. Now let's move on, and we'll take a look at some of the veiling flare. You know, wide open, we do see a fair amount of uh, you know of the flare coming in on edge. At at a T4, it's much better controlled, uh, but still present. Now we'll hop outside to take a first look at breathing. And again, I'm looking at the uh, sky on the top left and also the window on the bottom left to see uh, how much they change as we go back and forth from near to far. You know, what is the change of magnification? And uh, it's a fair amount, as you can see. Now, when we go to our chart, again, you can see that, uh, you know, these lenses, uh, they do breathe. Uh, quite a bit, quite a bit of motion back there. I should say quite a bit of movement back there. Now looking at this chart for distortion, um, at least on my system, I can detect a slight barrel distortion with this lens. And now a quick look at uh, some chromatic aberration. And as we focus in and out, you can of course uh, see that color fringing. It goes from uh, green to red, maybe a little bit of magenta in there. So at wide open, um, it does suffer from chromatic aberration. But now when we stop it down, you can see it does improve. It definitely improves as we would expect at a, at a F2 or a T2. And when we drop down to a T2.8, we do uh, continue to see some improvement with this lens as expected. Now with this uh, ad hoc shot, um, I'm looking at two things. One is vignetting. Uh, we definitely see a little bit of vignetting with this lens, as you can see. And in terms of sharpness, uh, let's go in to the center. We'll punch in uh, digitally in post. And we do see you know, a bit of uh, focus fall off at the edges. Now going all the way to the left, uh, we see maybe a little bit more focus fall off compared to the center. And as we go to the corners, as expected, um, you know, the focus does, uh, does tend to go away. The, uh, the left side does seem to be a little worse with this lens. Uh, could have been, uh, was not, uh, completely flat, uh, to this piece of insulation, but that is what this is showing us. When we drop down to a T2.8, we can see the vignetting has definitely improved a bit. 
And as far as focus compared to center to the edges, we see that it that it is better. Although with this lens, you know, the fall off on the edge of frame uh, is definitely there when it comes to focus. Now let's take a look at some of the corners. You know, it's improved, but uh, you know, still uh, has a bit of trouble. And at the other corner, uh, same thing, a uh, little worse on the left-hand side. Again, this may not have been perfectly flat to this uh, piece of insulation. And when we drop down to uh, T4, uh, basically we're going to see more of the same. So we'll just kind of speed it up a little bit. And you could uh, look at the center and compare it to the uh, edge of frames, both in the center and in the corners. So this is at a T4. So let's wrap things up with SLR Magic's Micro Prime Sin 50mm T1.2. Uh, this was a very interesting lens and I really, really wanted to like it. Um, I have a suspicion that SLR Magic has a quality control issue and uh, that I got a hold of uh, not a very good lens. Uh, for example, all the other lenses, they, they seem to outperform uh, this particular sample, and I think it, it would be worthwhile to try it again. Now, for what you get for basically $500, you have a purpose-built uh, prime lens that's very fast, a T1.2, that uh, has all metal construction, at least on the shell. It has built-in gears, both in focus and iris. It has a common front, and it has witness marks on both sides of the lens. These are all great things and they make life a whole lot easier, you know, for those of us doing motion work. But am I better off trying these lenses and filling out a set or looking at true vintage lenses? Because optically, the characteristics are very reminiscent of a vintage lens. Performance-wise, again, I think I have a bad example, would have to try more. But again, going back to the old getting old vintage lens compared to this lens, you know, this has a lot of things going for it, including brand new construction. How well it holds up over time, one never knows until several years have passed and we've used this in the field for quite a while. But to convert a true vintage lens for cinema use does take a little bit of time uh, and effort. And I've always found that you also have to go through usually several lenses to get to find a decent one. And again, that takes time and money. And if uh, if these lenses do perform at a, at a higher degree, then I would say this would be a very interesting solution for what I've been looking for. Uh, so sorry to kind of wrap things up in that direction, but it is what it is, as we like to say, and uh, it did disappoint, but uh, I'll try it again. Alrighty, well, thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.